Welcome to this Tech Bytes video where we are going to run through the tutorial, create an SAP Cloud Application Programming Model project for SAP HANA Cloud. So in this tutorial, we're going to see how to use the wizard for the SAP Cloud Application Programming Model to create a project in the SAP Business Application Studio that will also support SAP HANA Cloud. And through the series of tutorials, we're going to see how to combine HANA native artifacts and cloud application programming model artifacts in the same project. Now, uh, you will learn how to create an application uh, with the wizard for the cloud application programming model. And you're going to also learn how to use the local Git repository for development and testing purposes. Now, this tutorial is designed for SAP HANA Cloud. It is not designed for SAP HANA on-premise or SAP HANA Express Edition. There is an assumption that you've completed the previous sections of this tutorial series um, that have you creating an SAP Business Technology Platform trial account and also has you setting up your SAP HANA Cloud trial instance in that trial account and assuming that you've done the basic setup steps for the SAP Business Application Studio as well. Now we're going to start with step one, which is create a development space in the SAP Business Application Studio. So dev spaces are like isolated virtual machines uh, in the cloud that can quickly be spun up. Each dev space type contains tailored tools uh, and pre-installed runtimes for the target scenario, such as SAP Fiori or mobile development. And this simplifies and saves time in setting up your development environment uh, so that there's no need to install anything or, uh, or anything to upgrade. Uh, this lets developers focus on your business domain development anytime, anywhere. Now, in this step, we're going to create a new dev space configured for the SAP Cloud Application Programming Model, or CAP. Uh, if you already have a dev space configured for CAP and HANA development, you can skip this step, actually. But what we want to do is we want to start from the SAP Business Technology Platform trial homepage. And instead of going directly into your trial account, there's this link here on the main page for the SAP Business Application Studio. I'm going to go ahead and click that, and it will load the Business Application Studio in another tab. And I actually already have both a CAP and a HANA dev space created. You're only allowed two dev spaces in the trial. So I'm not going to create another one because I already have it. Um, I already have what I need here. But if you don't have an SAP Cloud Business Application dev space, then you would go ahead and say create dev space. You'd press this button. Uh, you give a name, which isn't really important to, um, to this tutorial. It's just to help you identify your dev spaces. I've named mine cap underscore dev. The screenshots in the tutorial show something slightly different. Um, doesn't, really, doesn't really matter or impact anything. The main thing is that you choose SAP Cloud Business Application as the type of application that you want to create in this dev space. Now I can go ahead and edit my dev space and you're gonna see much of the same dialogue that you would see when you were creating a new dev space. It shows you the standard tools on the left side that will automatically be included in your dev space. And then you have the ability to choose additional SAP uh, extensions to add into your space. And for our tutorial scenario, you wanna be sure and add the SAP HANA ones, the calculation view, the HANA tools, um, the, uh, well, we won't use the Smart Data Integration in this tutorial, but it's a, a good thing to go ahead and add. Um, so you want to make sure that you have those in there. If you don't, if you've already created a CAP dev space, then you can do as I'm doing here, stop your dev space, go into edit mode, and add these tools. Because in this tutorial series, we're going to do a combination of HANA native development and cloud application programming development. So we're going to need both sets of tools. Now my space already has that, so I don't need to make any changes. I'll just cancel to go back out and I will go ahead and click on the start my space. And this will take just a minute while it starts up, uh, but then it will take 
uh, I'll be able to go in and start my development. So I'll pause the video so we don't have to wait too long while it starts up. All right, my dev space is running now. You can see the status has changed here to say running. Now to load a dev space in the browser, you just go ahead and click on the net name of the dev space, and then it will go ahead and load up with the development environment for that dev space. And I actually have this left over from when I was working on the tutorials before. Um, I want to, uh, I'm actually going to just quickly go back up to my projects level here, and I'm going to just delete my work from before. There we are. And now I've got a pretty empty dev space. Now you might, yours might look a little more empty. You probably wouldn't have recent projects listed here, uh, which which I do because I've done more work. Although if you've done some recent work in, in this dev space, if you're loading a, a, a one that already existed, um, that that might be the case as well. So what we want to do is we want to be sure and configure our dev space. So one of the first things that we want to do is go down here to the bottom left hand corner and you see where it's listing my uh, Cloud Foundry org and space. Now, even if that is set, you probably want to go ahead and click on that and just refresh your login. Um, uh, that way you don't run into any problems later in the tutorial or as you run various wizards where it uh, maybe not having your authentication. So let me just get logged in here. There we are, and I set my org and I set my space. There we are. That's good. And if at any time you're not sure, like it asked you at the beginning for the API endpoint, if you weren't sure what your API endpoint is, you can go into your uh, trial. Which timed out on me there. Just a second while it refreshes. If you go into your trial cockpit and go into your sub account, then your API endpoint is listed right here. So if you're ever unsure, you can always come here and find out. All right, now that we are logged in, we want to create a new project. So let's say start from template to create a new project. And, you know, because we added the extra tools, you'll see HANA database and Fiori application, basic multi-target application, we want to choose a cap project and we want it to use the cap project wizard. Um, so we'll go ahead and say that and we'll say start. And what do we want to name our project? I'm going to name mine uh, my HANA app. We are going to use Node.js and we're going to go ahead and select the features uh, CI CD pipeline integration. Uh, configuration for SAP HANA because we're going to definitely do HANA in, in this uh, tutorial series and we want it to be a multi-target application. Uh, we can leave the rest. We don't need the samples um, and we're not doing multi-tenancy. So I will go ahead and say finish and it will generate the project and then it will reload it into my dev space. There we are. And what you can see here is the wizard has generated an entire multi-target application for us with multiple modules. We have an app module that will later hold our user interface elements, the DB module for our HANA database content, and the SRV module for our Node.js services layer. Likewise, it has created an MTA YAML for us and done a pretty nice job of filling in all the various details of the modules, uh, the resource for, for the HANA database and binding uh, things, uh, binding the, uh, the resource to our uh, database module for us. 
So you see the equivalent of our HANA, uh, I'm sorry, our, our service module and the path that is pointing to and the HANA database module and the path that it's pointing to. Uh, now, the thing is, you'll notice here, it's pointing to this gen SRV and gen DB. That's because a cap application by default, if I were to run CDS build and compile the project, uh, by default, it's going to target this, this separate gen folder that doesn't actually exist in my project structure yet. But if we're going to do HANA native development, the HANA tools in the Business Application Studio don't really like that, that setup. And we're doing some work behind the scenes as we speak to, uh, to adapt the HANA tools and, and the CAP wizards to, to behave a little better together. But for now, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to make some changes here. And uh, we're just going to take the folder structure. We're just going to take this gen off the folder structure of both these paths so that they point to the existing folders. I'm just going to save that in my MTA YAML. Now, that's enough to tell the project, uh, the MTA builder, if it was uh, to generate the whole project, what to do. But we also need to go into the package JSON. And this is where a lot of configuration for the cloud application programming model resides itself. And uh, uh, we don't actually need this dev dependency section because we're going to deploy directly to the HANA database during development. We're not going to use the SQLite. Uh, but what I am going to do here is I'm going to I'm going to add some additional things. I'm going to change the uh, the build target to be target and I'm going to tell it to go into the root of the project and instead of then generating everything into a separate gen folder it will put gen folders underneath DB and SRV and we'll have a, a project structure that uh, that is better compatible with HANA. Now in the requires DB section we're going to change this from SQL to HANA to say that we're going to go to HANA directly and I'm going to add I want to add another section right here. I'm going to say a section called HANA. And do I get value help? Nope. So we're going to call this deploy format. And we want it to say HDB table. Because to by default, CDS tries to generate HDB CDS documents, but we don't actually want that anymore. HANA Cloud doesn't support HDB CDS. We want it to compile directly to HDB table and HDB view, and that, uh, that change will do that. Now, while we're in here, we can go ahead. It's not absolutely mandatory, but I know there's a newer version of the HANA client, a 2.7 version. So I'm going to go ahead and update that so it uses the newer version. Save my package JSON. Well, that's all pretty good now. Uh, I can open a terminal. And this gives me a little shell into my environment. I'm going to do a lot with the shell environment, actually. Um, it's going to let me install things and run things. But the first thing I want to do is I just want to run an npn install in the root of the project, and it's going to pull down these package dependencies, like the HANA client and, and, and CDS and Express. These are all things my project are, are going to need to run locally. Now, while I have the console open, I'm going to install a little HANA utility here as well. Let me just clear this. I'm going to say npn install globally. That's what this dash G. I'm going to say HANA CLI. It's going to install the HANA developer command line tooling, which we'll, we'll use uh, sometimes to help us out as well. There we are, all done. And now, while we're in here, we'll go ahead and use this right away because this DB module, because it was generated by the CAP wizard, doesn't have all the configuration that the HANA wizard would have put in there. And we can't run both the wizards on the same project. What I can do is I can use this HANA CLI tool that I just installed, and I can say create module, and it's a little utility that will update this DB folder and basically put the content in there that the HANA project wizard would have put in there. 
like putting a separate package JSON with the HDI deployer and updating the HDI config file. So now I've got a project that is in really good shape to be able to do both CAP development and HANA development. The last thing I want to do in step seven is to initialize the local Git repository. So uh, what I want to do here is I want to just go here to the source control and it says no repository found. That's okay. I'm going to go ahead and initialize the repository. Um, and then it now it shows that it's being managed by, by Git. Now that it is managed by Git, I can go ahead and uh, do a stage all changes. There we are, stage all changes. And I can say new tutorial, first step. And then say commit signed off and that just committed my changes. Now this is just using a local Git repository. I want to stress that if you were doing real production development, you'd probably want to use uh, an external Git repository. Um, like we often use GitHub at SAP, um, but you know, to really persist that content permanently, but at least this gives us some uh, some version management, some version history that we can use locally. Like if we'd mess up one of the tutorials, we can go back to the previous step or the previous tutorial, reset our project state. Uh, so at least it gives us that capabilities. But for permanent persistence, you'd want to go ahead and use a, a public GitHub repo, uh, public, all right, not a public, but a uh, an external Git re uh, repository as well. So that brings us to the end of this tutorial and this Tech Bytes video. Uh, we've seen how to get our basic project uh, generated and set up and ready to do both HANA native and cloud application programming model development uh, within a single project. In the next step, we will continue with the development process and actually start creating some, some development artifacts in this project.